before I start. Did you see this? Ah, uh, your boy getting peep. Ah, uh, check me out. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What's going on Fireflies? This is Neon MUA and welcome back for another video. So today, I wanted to shoot a video on all the products that I loved and hated over the past year. So this video is gonna be a bops and flops of 2017. Now just because I hate a product doesn't mean that it is a bad product in general. It just doesn't work for me. You may love the product and that's perfectly fine. This is just my personal opinion on these items. So, don't get hurt. <laughs> So if you're interested in seeing all the products that I love and didn't quite like this year, keep on watching. So first I want to start with my bops of the year. I'm going to start with primers. So first product is going to be a NYX Angel Veil Primer. This primer is great. The description says it's a ultra veily oil free primer. It feels lighter than a cloud and leaves skin looking and feeling design. I love this product because like the description says it's not an oily primer. Uh, it does help with the pores and you know some primers tend to feel really weird on the skin. This one doesn't. So the NYX Angel Veil Primer is definitely a bop up this year. Another product I enjoyed this year is the Maybelline Master Prime Blur and Smooth Primer. This primer does just what it says. It's a blur and primer. So on the days that, you know, my pores are a little bit bigger than usual, I like to use this just to keep everything tight <laughs> and minimized. This is a great primer. Another primer that's drugstore price, just like the NYX primer. This primer is great. You get a lot of product. It's it is really great. It's blurring and smoothing. And who doesn't love that, that blur smooth? <laughs> so next up for my box of this year is an obvious favorite. If you guys have seen any of my videos, you know, you know, you know, you know. I love this brand and I love this product so much. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. First of all. Congrats to Rihanna this year for an amazing year in makeup. She's released, you know, so many great products and so many great collections from the initial launch up to now where she's releasing lipsticks and there are some new highlighters that are on the way. Rihanna, you did the damn thing, girl. You did it. You did that. The reason why I love this foundation is, of course, the color range off the bat. It's something that, you know, that was the first thing that people noticed about this. Uh, this primer or this foundation is mattifying. So for oily people like me, this foundation is great. The color of this is so rich. It, you know, a lot of foundations tend to leave you with that gray look, or it, it, the color isn't great. This foundation's color is so great. I love it. 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 Once again, Rihanna, congrats on an awesome year. And 2018 is gonna be amazing. We already know. You slay this year, you might as well slay the next one. My next bop of the year is actually two items that work really great together. And that is the L'Oreal Pro Go Foundation and the Total Coverage Foundation. Now, unfortunately, the range on this isn't that great. But these two foundations are really great together. I tried the Pro Go by itself when I first bought it. And then, you know, it's, it's great for those, you know, light coverage days. But when you combine it with the Total Coverage Foundation, these two work like a dream. It is medium to full coverage. It leaves you super glowy. And if I had to compare it to any formula that's out there now, I'll compare it to the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation because of that coverage and that glow. These two together, Amazing. Moving on to concealers. My first concealer bop is going to be another Maybelline item. It is the Maybelline Master Concealer. The reason why I love this item is because it is surprisingly lightweight. It comes out kind of thick, but it goes on. It's really lightweight. You don't really feel it. It is medium to full coverage and it's affordable. That's great. And it also blends very well. I have noticed over this past year, a lot of concealers have been a little tricky to blend out. Maybelline, this one is amazing. Um, it doesn't beat Fit Me. Fit Me is amazing. Just, but this one, this one's great. The only thing I wish is that it had an applicator 
um, it's just a tube, squeezes out. But I mean, if you're going to use a sponge for it, it's whatever. Another concealer that I found to be a pop this year is going to be the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This concealer reminds me a lot of the formula for the Fenty Beauty foundations because it is matte, because it's lightweight. Um, the color choices on the darker side aren't mm, mm, questionable. We'll say that they are questionable. But this concealer is great. It blends out nicely. It's, like I said, it's matte. So who doesn't love matte every now and then, especially if you're an oily grease ball like I am. Um, hopefully they will release some new shades for this so that everyone can get a chance to try it, but this concealer is really great. Moving on to powders now. Um, Maybelline this year has just been slaying constantly over and over for me. The powder that is a bop for me this year is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. For me, and a lot of darker complexion people. Powder is super tricky because you don't want flashback and you don't want to look a mess with a bunch of powder on your face. Maybelline Fit Me powders are so good. They are finally like a high brand, a luxury brand powder, but at the same time they're affordable and they come in so many colors. I use the color 35 Deep and I have not put it down. I it's great, it's, it's so great. I use it for sitting under the eyes, I use it to set concealer, I use it to carve out my contour. This powder is so good, so good. And it's another affordable product, so get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Maybelline, you did it this year, kudos to you. For blush this year, and I'm not really a blush person, I don't like wearing blush a lot because I feel like it can go a little clownish if you're not too careful but for me the elf blush palette in deep has been my favorite blush of the year i have used it all year pretty much um you have four colors in this mirror first of all this mirror okay but this palette is so good the pan sizes are nice and big the product it's easy to work into your skin. It's not overly pigmented, so you can build it up if you need to. This, this is just a great blush palette, you know. Elf is one of those brands that a lot of people tend to look over, but Elf really does have a lot of great products. So, the Elf blush palette, definitely been a bop for the year. Moving on to the glow. Now, as you can tell, I love a nice little glow. This year has been quite a whirlwind of glow products, but there have been a few that I have really enjoyed, such as this one, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sun Dip Glow Kit. For me, this year has been so great. Um, I talked about it briefly in the past video, but this palette is great for deeper skin tones. This bronze, it looks like metal on the skin. I, on deeper skin, bronze looks like liquid gold. It's so amazing. Uh, Tourmaline, I think that's the color. The shade right here is a favorite for me. Uh, Summer and Moonstone are also really great. This is just a great palette. If you have deeper complexion skin and you want a great uh, highlighter that doesn't leave that weird cast on you like most highlighters do, get this one. It's so good. It, it, it look, ah, what can I say? This is a great look. Another Bop for me this year in the realm of glow has been the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter in the color Molten Gold. I am wearing this now, and this is like the Sun Dick. It is liquid metal on your face. I love, I love this. I love it. It's the pan size is huge. It the product is so pigmented. Like, let me show you. So pigmented and it blends out nicely. It, it's another product that is great for deeper skin tones and that's something I'm really glad that a lot of us are starting to get now. A lot of brands, you know, are starting to realize that we need products too and they're starting to work great for us. This, this highlighter is so amazing and it's another drugstore item. So why not? So why not? Why not save your money and get a great highlighter? Maybelline, again, 
A1. Some of my honorable mentions for this year have been, of course, the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Duo Highlighters. Those highlighters are great. I just wanted to make sure that those two that I picked out earlier were the ones that I highlighted, but the Kilowatt highlighters are so good. The color choices are really nice. And from what I've been seeing around on Snapchat and Twitter, we're about to get some more out about to shake up the makeup game. Another honorable mention for me this year has been the Wet n Wild Mega Glow highlighters. Specifically, the highlighter palette that just came out recently. That palette is bomb. That was so bomb. Moving on to the eyes. For mascara this year, my bops have been the Maybelline Big Shot Colossal Mascaras. More specifically, the Makeup Shayla Collection. Now, these, the Colossal Big Shot Mascara is a great mascara on its own. If you haven't tried it yet, I definitely suggest you try it. But the Big Shot Colossal Makeup Shayla line is so good. They have three colors, uh, the baddest black, which is a ultra pigmented black. This is, I have not, this is something that I have not yet put down. I love this. I love it. And she also came out with two colored mascaras, a purple and a blue. One problem that I found out with color mascaras is that the color doesn't necessarily run on the eyes that great, and these do. They coat the eyes perfectly. They dry down great, and the color is there. Like, you can't deny it. Shayla, this is an amazing collection. Kudos to you for this year. Maybelline, again, great job. These are some amazing mascaras. Another mascara that I have loved, and I know didn't come out this year, but it's been a great mascara for me, especially recently, has been the Benefit Roller Mascara. This, for the days that I don't want clumpy, big, full, voluminous lashes, I like my lashes to be nice and separated and long. And this mascara is great. The one is amazing because it helps to separate each lash and coat each lash and get the product on there. And this is an amazing mascara. I'm wearing it now and I hate love it so much. So the Benefit Roller Lash is a one, a bop. For a liner, I'm not one to necessarily wear a lot of liner, but when I do, there's only one liner that I do use. And that is the NYX Epic Liner. This liner is amazing because unlike most liners, it is fully black. It's not this muted down black, it's black. Not I me. Mean. And it dries down fast and you can't, like, that liner is great. It can go thin, it can go full, and it's an amazing liner. For lashes, this has been the year for me that I've decided to try doing lashes more. Um, and this year, the only lashes that I've really worn have been the Eyelore Beauty Blogger Collection lashes. Um, this collection of lashes is great because there's such a wide variety from Demi, Wispies, Fold Out Lashes, just, just great. There are three lashes styles in particular that I've liked, and that has been the Crazy Ray Ray Extra Glam Lash, the Ann Lee So Lovely Lash, and the Nicole Guerrero 143 Lash. These lashes have been great because I like full lashes. I already have long curly lashes as is, so I want something that's dramatic and full and sits out there. These are my favorite. I love these lashes so much. They're at Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, wherever you get your lashes from. Super affordable, super great. For lips, it has to go to Maybelline yet again for their Color Sensational Lipsticks and their Vivid Hot Lacquer Lips. Now, both of these are great because of their color range. More specifically, the Color Sensational lip Lipsticks. If you go into any drugstore, you will see a giant wall full of colors from Maybelline. I think that's so amazing. Maybelline has, yet again, done something amazing. And their lipstick line is ever-growing. The colors are so, there's no limit to the amount of colors that you want. If you want nudes, there's plenty of nudes. If you want bold colors, you got it. If you want reds, you got it. You, you, you can't, it, there's not a color that you don't want. And for their lip lacquers, which are pretty hard to find actually, I had to search a bit for these, but their lip lacquers are so good. They're 
great and the color range is just great as well there's nudes there's reds there's some wild colors like this one which is royal great job maybelline another pop in terms of lips has been the wet and wild liquid cat suit lips um an affordable liquid lipstick it's, it's simple as that affordable it's matte it's transfer proof there's a wide range of colors as well um they just started getting more into their metallic shades i know they released a few of the mermaid collection but i saw some more so if you want an affordable and super great liquid lipstick i highly suggest you get the wet and wild ones now for eyeshadow palettes to start off with is going to be the morphe eyeshadow palettes more specifically starting from the Jaclyn Hill and up um, Morphe's eyeshadow palettes aren't necessarily weren't necessarily bad to begin with but ever since the Jaclyn Hill release their palettes have just gone up um, the Jaclyn Hill palette for starters is definitely one that a lot of people gravitate to the palette is rich in color very versatile this is an easy travel with palette um the mattes the metallics and shimmers morphe's metallics and shimmers have always been impressive but their mattes formula has stepped up so much and you can't deny that morphe and jacqueline this is a great palette. Another great palette that has come from Morphe this year has been the Morphe Dare to Create 39A palette. But the Morphe Dare to Create palette is massive to begin with. Uh, another great thing I love about this palette is that shade names. You see the shade names? There are shade names. And this entire row of transition colors Great. So, if you're a type of person that doesn't want to carry around a lot of palettes, Dare to Create is a great palette for you. You have the super versatile. You have your cooler colors. You have your neutral colors. You have your reds. You have more nudes. It's a great palette. There's so many options and possibilities, which is why it's called the Dare to Create. It is a great palette. This next entry should be no surprise to you. I mean, come on. Do we really have to talk about it? Every video that I've uploaded has mentioned me talking about how great the Juvia's Place palettes are. Again, black owned, super pigmented, super affordable. Why not? Really. Juvia's Place, thank you so much for releasing some amazing palettes this year. Really. And lastly, for my bops of this year, has to go to the Morphe continuous setting spray now I love this spray so much it is continuous I mean that's something to instantly love um, I wasn't necessarily on the hype train for the Urban Decay all-nighter setting spray but Morphe's continuous setting spray is great and that is it for all of my bops of this year now it's time to get into the flops of 2017 <laughs> Starting off, this list is going to be the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. Um, I don't have this. This is weird. This is a weird product. This is odd. It's greasy. Um, I don't like the formula of it. It's, it's really rough on the skin. Um, and I don't notice any, you know, added benefits aside from the fact that it's blurring. Um, doesn't help my foundation last. In fact, it helps my foundation move around. Um, if you like that, then hey, go for it. The Milk Makeup Burn Stick is a no from me. Next is the Milani 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. Um, my main issue with this is the pump. The pump is trash, okay? It, 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 it works when it wants to, and I don't need my foundation to work when it wants to. No. Um, it is a full coverage concealer, but it feels super heavy. And the color range on this is weird. One thing about this line is that a lot of the foundations in this line run gray. And why? I'm not a fan of that. So the Monty 2 in 1 foundation is a flop. Next flop on this list is by L'Oreal, and it is the Infallible Pro Glow Concealer. Now, the foundation is great. Like I said, it it leaves you glowy and dewy, and it works well when you mix it. But with this, 
The concealer is supposed to cover and conceal. This doesn't do that. It's watery. It's lightweight. It's light. It, it doesn't do much. It, it blends away the moment that you try to blend it. And it, it, even when I let it sit on my face for about two to three minutes, it's still it's hard to work with. I'm using it now on my face, but I paired it with another concealer. And that's how, that's, no. Foundations is cool, I don't, no, this, no, this doesn't do anything for me. I don't, mm, nah, sorry sis. Next up on this flop list is gonna be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Powder Palette. Now, for me, this is a problem with hype. I don't like the hype, I don't like this palette. Um, this is the palette. I use maybe this color, sometimes this as a bronzer, and the orange for blush on rare occasions. Um, I rarely pick up this palette. The pan sizes are super small. Um, I just don't. And I feel like for this to be the dark palette, I'm, I struggle using the darkest color on this. So, it's not good, it's this. Mm, no, I love your highlighters though. Highlighters are everything. Contour. The next item on this list is painful for me to say. Uh, the Fenty Beauty Matte Trio Sticks. Okay, I said it. All right, look. The contour colors are amazing. The highlight sticks are just as good. My issue with the Matte Stick Trio is the concealer stick. This, this is, I don't like this. I don't like it. It's not, I don't know if it wasn't supposed to be a concealer stick or if it was just like a highlighting stick. Kind of creamy, but I feel like it's super dry once you put it on. Um, putting it on is the main concern because it tugs on your skin so much and you put lighter colors in some pretty sensitive spots. Under the eye, um, here, you don't want to pull and tug on places and so I don't, the lightest color is a flop for me. The rest of the match sticks are great though, but the lightest color, um, no. Next up on my flop list has to be the Sleep Makeup Highlighting Palettes. And a lot of people were raving about this when they really first came out because it's an affordable highlighter set. And that's what kind of got me hooked on to. My issue with this is that because there are four colors, but, all of those colors look the same when you wash them. It's like, there's a white, there's a purple, and there's a gold orange color. They all look white to me. Don't like it. And it's not black people friendly, to be honest. For three white highlighters to show up on my skin, no. Another highlighter that has been a flop for me has to be the Wet n Wild. Mermaid highlighter. Um, now I bought most of the collection. Um, the highlight was what I was most excited about, but looking at it now, this highlighter is weird. I get that it's mermaid influence, but the way that that highlighter goes on, it goes on like a strong gold and it shifts to green. And when you're of a dark complexion, you don't want a green highlighter on your skin. And especially when you put it on your cheekbones and it leaves that weird cast, the cast is green. Unless you're doing it for editorial purposes, I don't know who would want a green highlighter on their face. But the mermaid highlighter isn't necessarily something I'm a big fan of, so sorry sis. Moving on to the eyes. This one may come as a shock to a lot of people, but Again, my list is influenced by things that I've used and didn't like personally. With that being said, the next flop on my list is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara. I know, before you all get it right, hear me out. My lashes are weird in the fact that they are long and curly. So, it's hard for me to work with a lot of mascaras and eyelashes because of that. This mascara, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It, I feel like it doesn't do anything for me. I feel like it doesn't lengthen my lashes. 
And like I said, it might just be because of the fact that I have weird eyelashes, but it doesn't lengthen my lashes. It doesn't do anything outstanding for me. Um, Benefit Roller Lash works amazing in what this is supposed to do. So, Royal Lash Paradise, no, I don't like it. Another mascara that has been a flop for me has to go to Katy Perry's CoverGirl Col uh, collab. It is the Katy Cat Eye Mascara. I got this mostly because of the fact that it's blue, but this mascara doesn't do anything. Like, it leaves a weird blue tint on my eyes. If that, it doesn't make them voluminous. It doesn't make them long. Compared to the Maybelline Makeup Shayla collab, this mascara feels heavily. This is what this is supposed to be. And to be honest, the Katy Perry collection from CoverGirl is, didn't impress me at all, this included. So, nah. Now for another product that kills me because Maybelline has obviously been a great brand for me this year, but the color tattoo eyeshadows are, mm, mm. no. These eyeshadows are weird because they go on kind of clumpy. It looks, it might look good now, but once it dries down, it gets just like muted, mush situation. Another reason why I don't like these for eyeshadows is because of the fact that they don't last on the eyes at all. Um, the slightest ounce of moisture just wipes the whole thing away. It's hard to blend in at all. Um, it's just not great. and. I don't like these. I don't reach for them. I like using them. I, I like using them to enhance a look per se, like you've seen in this picture and this picture. Um, but in terms of an eyeshadow, nah, I don't like it. Another Maybelline product that does disappoint me this year and is kind of a shock considering how hard it was pushed is the Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks. Um, if you've tried these, you know that these are super sticky. Um, they don't dry down fully at all, so the claim of being matte is a reach. And removing these is also a pain. Now I get it, these are supposed to be long lasting 12 hour lip paint, but at some point I want to take this thing off and I shouldn't have to buy another product to take it off. I should be able to just use a regular makeup wipe or a cold cream or whatever you decide to use. It's a pain. I don't like it. Get rid of it. Now, this product is odd. Um, I don't know what this company thought they were doing with this. It's not cute. This is the e.l.f. liquid highlighter. Now, I, the liquid highlighter trend is, it's a hard ship to sell for me because some liquid highlighters are great if they're really creamy. If it's liquid, nah, I don't like it. This is one of those liquids that is weird. If you don't, shh, you know, you have to play with this bottle a lot. If you don't play with the bottle, it comes out super watery. Um, my problem with this in terms of performance is that it's greasy. It, it's, when you blend it out, it's super watery. And it looks good right here but on foundation, it breaks down your foundation. I've tried using this with my finger. I've tried using this with a brush, with a beauty blender. This product breaks down your, your foundation and the rest of your base, and it can piss you off, especially if you're using this as one of the last things on your face. I don't like this at all. It, it's greasy and watery at the same time, which is a weird combination, but this product is bad, sis. Elf. I know you got some good products, but that is trash. I'm sorry, I love y'all, but that product is trash, man. And this product may also be another shock. This is the Naked Heat Eyeshadow Palette by Urban Decay. Um, I was very, very skeptical about getting this because I've heard so many people say, oh, this is great. And then so many people were saying, oh, this is bad because of the swatches. This is my first naked palette I've ever bought by Urban K. Um, so right off the bat, the packaging is amazing. Uh, super luxe. Um, the shades, choice and concept seems nice because it's a warm naked palette. Performance wise, um, it's, it's weird. Um, the mats are great. The mats are buildable. They can run 
deeper than they appear in the pan and that's actually pretty shocking and I like that. In terms of the shimmers and metallics though, they fail to perform. Um, the shimmers feel bleak and blah. And the metallics aren't metallic. The metallics are like shiny. But and this looks cool now as a swatch, but when you put it on your eyes, it's just like uh, muted. It, I don't like that. For this price point, this palette could be a whole lot better. I personally am not a fan of it. I really wanted to like it too, especially for how much I paid for it. But it, it didn't work. I think it was a great concept. The idea of a heat palette is great. I think had this been marketed differently in the sense of it being a heat palette and an ice palette of some sort paired with it would be great concept. The idea of a warm eyeshadow palette by Urban K isn't it's not great. Especially when you can buy a Morphe palette that costs half the half the price and you can get three times as many shades. So Nikki Heat is sorry. And the last product in my flops this year is a product that I despise with every ounce of my being. It is the e.l.f. Aqua Priming Mist. No. 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 I don't know what this is supposed to prime. I don't know who this is suited for. But no. I don't like this. This is something I... Now, I don't hate things. But this is something I hate. This is, this is hated. It doesn't prime you at all. The, the sprayer is super aggressive and it leaves you feeling like you just got rained on. Like, it, it's not a mist, it's a shower. I don't want to shower with this. It doesn't prime, like I said. It, it feels like just water. That's the problem, it feels like water. It feels like overpriced water in a spray bottle. If you're using it as a primer, sis, what are you doing? Take it back, put it back on the shelf, get your receipt. Get your money back. And that'll do it for today's video. These are all of my bops and flops of 2017. As I said, this is not meant to be a personal attack on any brand or company. It's simply me saying that I don't like certain products. This doesn't mean I hate brands. This doesn't mean I hate companies. Overall, it simply means that the product that was released that I talked about was not that great. As you saw, there are plenty of Maybelline products and plenty of Fenty Beauty products that I like. But there can be some things that I just don't like because they don't work for me. And just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it doesn't work for you. If it works for you and you love it, that's great, sis. But if I can't use it, I'm not going to talk to you about it. But I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video that I post on my channel. Make sure you guys follow me on all my social media accounts as well. That's Neon MUA on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can add me on Snapchat as well as Lionheart555. And that'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, see you later. Oh my gosh, that video's done. Great. Don't rush me. I'm cute though. Mm -hmm. This look is cute. I'm here for it. No, cute. Girl, you're better. You're better. Suck my belly button. What? Suck my belly button. Oh my god. She's trash. She's trash. You're trash. You're garbage. Mm. You're a whole mess. You're a mess. You're super mess. Whatever.